Hi. Um, hi, thanks for coming. I know we're competing with um, John Skeet and uh, Scott Hanselman, so I'm, I'm very gratified that you've decided to come and see me instead and my co-speakers. Um, my name's John Stovin. Um, I've come from Sheffield. Uh, I work for a company called Three Squared. Um, and if you want to find me on Twitter, I'm at John Stovin. Uh, I'm just going to do a very quick talk about WebAssembly. You've probably seen some other talks about it while you're here. There seem to have been quite a few. So I will, I will go through this. I hope I've got a slightly different angle on it to, to other people. Um, so what is it? Um, well, it's, um, this is the definition from uh, the WebAssembly website. Uh, it's WebAssembly, abbreviated WASM, is a binary instruction format for, stack -based virtual, for a stack-based virtual machine. So what's different from what we have already? Well, it's binary. It's not source code, unlike JavaScript. Um, it's a stack-based, uh, so no registers. Everything pushes and pops off onto or off the stack. Uh, and it's a virtual machine that runs in the browser sandbox. Um, so uh, again, quoting from the website, it's a portable target for the compilation of high-level languages. Uh, it's size and load time efficient, and it runs in a memory-safe sandboxed environment on the browser. And it also supports non-web embeddings. So um, HTML. That way, sorry. Okay, I'm just seeing if I can. Right, I just that would be lovely. Because I just want to see my notes. Right, lovely. Thank you. So um, we've got HTML and JavaScript. Why do we need this? You know, what do we need this for? One word: performance. Um, so we're using bigger and bigger JavaScript um, frameworks: Angular, React. Um, we uh, uh, they need so so page loads are getting bigger. Um, JavaScript it is interpreted in the browser, so it's not as fast as it could be. Some applications just need more performance. One of the things I'm interested in is uh, audio synthesis. It's very hard to do anything meaningful in a browser. Um, so anything we can do to improve uh, client side performance uh, is a benefit. There's also an opportunity possibly to take existing code bases written in non-JavaScript languages uh, and run them in the browser. So you're saying, haven't we tried this before? Uh, yeah, I can think of several uh, times when we've, we've tried this before. We tried Flash. Uh, that was uh, a never-ending security bonfire. Um, you need to install a client. You need to make sure your, ver your client, ver uh, the client version is up to date. Um, uh, lots of um, uh, compatibility issues. Uh, we tried Java. Again, Java in the browser, you need to, set, to install um, the, the runtime separately. Uh, ActiveX only works on Internet Explorer. Um, again, another security bonfire. Um, Google Native Client. So Google came up with an idea of having some, something like this, but only, it only runs in Chrome. Um, and again, people said there were security issues with it. Um, so the latest attempt was a thing called Asm.js. Has anybody come across Asm.js? Nope. So the idea behind Asm.js was to take um, a small subject, subset, pardon me, of the JavaScript language uh, that could be effectively, efficiently um, pre-compiled almost, um, and then run that in the browser. The idea was to use that as an output of compilers from other languages, particularly C++. Um, it, it got some acceptance. It does give you a performance boost, but it still has problems. Um, so coming off the back of that ASM.js uh, idea, we've come to WebAssembly. So what, what's, what's different about WebAssembly compared to, to the other things that uh, I've mentioned already. Well, for a start, it's an open specification. It's sponsored by the W3C. Um, so unlike, for example, Java or uh, Flash, it doesn't have a commercial owner. Um, it's built into the browser. It's a W3 spec W3C specification, so you don't need a plugin. You can just run it on any modern browser. Because it's part of the browser, um, it gets updated with the browser update cycle, and all modern browsers have very thorough update cycles. Um, it's 
widely available on all modern browsers. Um, it's built upon the existing ASM.js work that was done. So ASM.js was also a W3C standard, uh, and a lot of the stuff that was done for that can be reused for, for WebAssembly. Um, because it's a bytecode rather than JavaScript, uh, it's faster to parse uh, and it's smaller size. Um, the compiler and also the runtime do static and dynamic checks to make sure that you don't do bad things with it. And it promises near native performance. I've put near native in quotes because it is not, it may be promising it, but it's nowhere near that yet. Uh, there's, there's lots of uh, reasons to believe that there are things that, that uh, uh, vendors can do to make to improve the performance, but but they they're not doing that yet. So um, these are the goals of the um, the WebAssembly um, working group. They wanted a portable binary format that run on, would run on any browser, pretty much. Um, they wanted to do a, a minimum viable product, which they based on ASM.js, and then add more features later if they got wider acceptance. Um, they wanted to execute within and integrate with the existing web platforms. So they wanted something um, that would automatically work with everything that we already have. Um, that's kind of given. But they also wanted to be able to support other scenarios. For example, IoT devices, uh, shells, data center servers, mobile devices. Um, and they also wanted two formats. One is strict bytecode, but they also want a human readable one as well. Um, one of the one of the motivations for that is that if you're running um, uh, WebAssembly in your browser, you don't really want to have to uh, look at individual bytecode in the uh, in the debugger. It would be nice to have something that was a bit more readable than that, just so you can understand what's going on. Um, so, how does this all work? Well, the initial idea was to take um, C and C++ as their kind of base language uh, and compile that to bytecode. Um, there is a, um, an extension for the LLVM compiler um, which takes the output of that compiler and converts it to, to WebAssembly bytecode. Um, this was built on top of an earlier uh, version of Imscripten that would compile to ASM.js. So again, they were leveraging their existing experience with ASM.js. Um, so once you've, once you've compiled your bytecode, you can load it into your, your browser with a, with a single call uh, in the page, and then you can use the ccall and crap methods to call into individual functions in the bytecode that you've loaded. Um, I don't really have time to go into it in any great detail, but that's just a kind of idea of, of how it all works. I've got a very quick example here of some um, uh, C uh, that compiled to bytecode, just so you can understand how it works. Everybody likes a factorial. Uh, so we've got a nice recursive factorial function here. Um, you can see that the whole thing is stacked. So we've got here the binary representation, and this is the, the, the human readable version. It's very close to assembly language. Um, just a quick example of what's happening here. First of all, we take, so, we, the, we have a function that takes a single parameter here, that's stored in position zero on our stack, then we push another value zero on to the stack, do a comparison, so that's this n equals zero here. Um, if they're the same, then we push one on the stack and return, so that we return this value. Otherwise, we um, find, get our n again, push our n value twice onto the stack, then push one, so that's, here we have n minus one, we do the subtraction, um, then we call our, our we, we call zero, which is returning to the top of the stack again, so calling ourselves, uh, and then when that returns, we multiply by the n we stuck on here, and then we return. So uh, entirely stack-based, reasonably understandable. Um, they are going to extend this. There's a, there is a plan to, to provide some sort of portable um, program database structure so that you can at least see uh, your variable names and, and um, 
rather than just using uh, local references, which will help. Uh, so as of March 2017, the, uh, the community, community group uh, announced that they had support for Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and WebKit, which pretty much covers the entire spectrum of all the current browsers. Uh, there might be a few, but they're fairly uh, minor. Um, so we have tooling support several languages now. So as I said earlier, C and C++, uh, we have the mscripten backend for, for the LLVM compiler. Um, JetBrains have a Kotlin uh, compiler that will compile Kotlin directly to WebAssembly. Uh, I believe Rust has a compiler too. And uh, if you went to see any of the talks earlier in the conference, um, you'll know, certainly know that they're about Blazor, which is um, uh, .NET. Uh, runtime running in, uh, in the browser. And uh, as a F Sharp developer, uh, I'm quite keen to also plug uh, Bolero, which is a sim uses the same, same, um, the same uh, runtime, um, but built, uses F Sharp as a, as a language instead. Um, so problems, well, it's not gonna solve all the, all the problems um, that we have with, um, you know, uh, that we have with current web applications. You don't know what sort of resources you've got on the on the client that you're using. So um, you might be running on a very tightly constrained um, mobile device, for example. Um, so you, you and at the moment, as far as I know, there is no way of of validating what sort of resources you have on the client so that you can kind of scale performance to, to match. Um, the other problem is that the, the Blazor and Bolero both use uh, a mono uh, runtime, which is compiled down to, to, to uh, WebAssembly. So you've got one virtual machine running inside another virtual machine, which is bound to have some sort of performance impact. Um, although, from what I understand, um, the plan is in the near future to have a compiler that will compile .NET directly to, to WebAssembly. Uh, I believe the Mono team are working quite hard on that at the moment. Um, and certainly uh, there was a demonstration of that earlier today. So um, the question, should you use WebAssembly in your next project? Um, before I got here, my answer was no. Uh, having seen the presentations, I'm more likely to say not yet. Uh, I'm more impressed with what I've seen here uh, than, than I was previously. Um, admittedly, a lot of the stuff I've seen here has been kind of promises of stuff to come rather than actually released, released software at the moment. But it's, so it's worth um, looking at. Uh, you probably want to use it if you're thinking of, of writing a browser-based game or if you need some, some more, more performance out of the browser than you can currently get with JavaScript. There are problems your... your um, WebAssembly code at the moment can't interact directly with the DOM, so you have to call you have to call back to JavaScript and then get your JavaScript to talk to the DOM, which is a, a performance hit. Um, and you need to be confident that the client you're going to run it on is actually capable of doing what you're asking it to do. Um, so that's a quick overview of, of what WebAssembly is, and just again as a as an F# -sharp user. If there are any other F sharp users out here, do give Bolero a try. And if you don't, go and learn F sharp and then try and try Bolero. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, I don't know if I've got time for questions, but if I have, have we got any questions? No. Nope. Good. Right. Thank you.